It was a destructive end to a protest in Aurora last night. A large group had spent hours peacefully marching over the death of Elijah McLean, but later in the evening, things turned violent when a smaller group outside the Aurora Municipal Center. And also along I-225 yesterday, as protesters marched along the highway, this was just before 7 o'clock when officers say a Jeep drove through the crowd of people. The driver didn't hit anybody, but Aurora police say a protester fired a weapon at the Jeep. Two people in the crowd were shot. They are doing okay. Police are still looking for the person who fired those shots. And police tell us they have interviewed the driver of the Jeep, who they say is cooperating with an investigation, and they have impounded that vehicle. This afternoon, officers were back out on I-225 looking for more evidence in what happened. They are asking the public for videos or pictures of the Jeep that could capture what happened beforehand. Aurora police say nobody was arrested last night. There is a significant amount of damage at the Aurora Municipal Center. Nine News reporter Noel Brennan is live outside that building now. And Noel, we're talking about smashed windows, a fence torn down. And police say this was a separate group. They call it hijacking the message of the initial protest yesterday. Right, and Aurora Mayor Mike Kaufman agrees with that sentiment. He says that it was a smaller group that broke away from the larger protest, a group of about 150 or so people that used the cover of a protest to be violent and destructive. And he says it was that smaller group that did damage to the municipal center behind me. All of these windows on the courthouse are now boarded up after they were smashed Saturday night. Tremendous amount of damage. The day after protests. And it's going to be the taxpayers of the city uh, that, that pay for this. Aurora Mayor Mike Kaufman sees a message shadowed by violence and shattered glass. You, you get that message corrupted and compromised uh, by a small group of people uh, that, that, is, that uses the demonstration as a cover uh, to be able to do violent acts. A group of about 150, Kaufman says, stuck around after a protest over the death of Elijah McLean to break windows at the municipal courthouse, shoot fireworks inside, and tear down a fence in front of police headquarters. The question is, can we do better? Uh, the question is, can we find that right balance uh, where we're willing to use some of those non-lethal tools uh, to be able to, 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 to stop the destruction of public property. In a Facebook post, Kaufman initially called the group domestic terrorists, but later changed his wording. When you reflect on domestic terrorism, you think about uh, the Oklahoma City bombing in, you know, 1995, or you think about the Pulse nightclub uh, in 2016, um, where people were the target. This isn't that. Aurora police say no arrests were made, the mayor wants to know how the department will respond next time. From my military days, weakness invites aggression. And so are we inviting more violence to our city by not taking a stand? He also questions how a march on I-225 led to a Jeep speeding toward protesters on the highway. How did a vehicle get through? Police say a protester shot at the Jeep's tires and hit two fellow protesters. Sunday. There are only remnants of a night that scarred both people and property. And Jenny, tomorrow, Aurora Mayor Mike Kaufman says he wants to meet with the interim police chief to talk about exactly what happened on Saturday, what happened here at the Municipal Center, and what happened on I-225. Specifically here, wants to know how police are going to handle the next incident if a protest leads to this kind of destructive uh, violence that we've seen. All right, Noel Brennan reporting in Aurora for us tonight. Noel, thank you. And for just a little background, this protest yesterday in the afternoon started as a protest over the death of Elijah McLean. He died in August of 2019. Aurora police stopped him after somebody had called in a suspicious person. And during attempts to restrain McLean, officers put him in a carotid hold and paramedics injected him with a sedative. McLean died a few days later. The district attorney's office decided not to file charges against the officers who were involved in that. The city has now approved a team for an independent investigation and Governor Jared Polis has directed the state's attorney general to look into the case.